Say hello to the Chattahoochee River. I'm over here by Riverside Park. First time out in the summer, for the summer that is. It's a great day out here. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna try to spice these uh, Chattahoochee videos together. They're gonna be all different times of the day. You're gonna see a lot of nature out here. You know what it's like around water. There's a lady over there doing her thing, just like I am. I got this new kayak. It's a lot better than my old one. My last one was inflatable. I went to go splurge on a uh, a real one, but the one I used to have was a good one. It lasted two years. It only had two holes in it, but I can't find the other one. It's just getting to that point where I used that kayak so much. The last one, the inflatable one, the, I can't remember the brand, Intech something. It's like the same company that makes blow up mattresses and all. But yeah, that was like the best money I've ever spent. It's like $98 or something online. No, excuse me, it was like a hundred and something plus shipping. But it was a great time. I'll never forget those days. But they shall continue because I have a better kayak now. But I did like that last one because it was portable. It was a blow up, inflatable one. Those are good. Those are really good for the right thing. But I had a great time. They were comfortable. But the only problem was is that I overused it. <laughs> I overused it. And uh, just, I think the mistake that I made with it was that uh, I would never deflate it. Because I used it so much. I mean, I'd go out at least two or three times a week during a uh, summer break. But I never would deflate it. It stormed yesterday. I tried to do this yesterday. But it stormed after like three o'clock. Plus, the place where I got the kayak, it um, it's not them in the best place. It's the REI over there by Premier Mall. It took like an hour and 30 minutes to get there, and I only lived like a mile away. Cause traffic so bad in that location. I literally sat at an intersection for about 45 minutes, just one intersection across the street from the REI. It made me so mad. But I knew what I was in for. When you love something so much, you'll do almost anything. Even sit in traffic and take an hour and 45 minutes to go one mile. You know how that goes. You love something so much. You'll do anything for what you love. Waters are really clear today, by the way. Look at that. You probably can't see it. The camera's different. It's different than a human eye. What you experience. So the camera's going to pick up some kind of reflections that you're not going to be able to see in the water. But I see quite nicely. Don't ever lose your eyes. Eyes mean everything to everybody. Some people can't help it. But even if you're not, if you're able to help it, and you're able to come out here. Even if you're not able to come out here. That's why I invented Google River View also. Just put on a camera. When those cameras they use for the cars, of course it's gotta be waterproof. Just like the cameras you would use for Google Trail View. When they the hikers put that thing on their backpack. There's a golf ball. I see it, you don't. I would get out and get it. There's a golf course not too far from here up there by Eves Road, I think it is. E-V-E-S. I'm a walking map. That's Willio Road. Turns in Lower Roswell. We're gonna go all the way down to Gold Ranch, but see, when I do things, I do things 100%. That's my downfall. I love perfection. Everything has to be perfect. It's the way you have to look at things. It's the way I've always been. 
but it's downfall. That's why some things never get completed. It's because you do things at 100%. 100% means also perfection. But when you combine those both, the odds of you completing a lot of things are very rare. Just like when I made some sculptures in the past. Not just paintings, but sculptures, art pieces, any kind of thing I make, create. But to me, some things are never complete because I'm always striving for perfection. It's a downfall of mine. I would look at a piece that most people would think would be very complex, more than complete than you could ever imagine. But the problem is, is that I, they would just sit around. They've been at art shows before they have, architectural art shows in the past, before school started. People liked them, people loved them. But I always consider them incomplete. You'll hate what I did to some of them. I took them apart, destroyed them, to try to figure out a different way to make them better. Big mistake. But I can always keep doing what I'm doing. Remake it, recreate it in a way. <laughs> Somebody's yelling at me. <laughs> uh, it's nice out here, I know. You're probably thinking I have a billion dollars. I will in the future. I like studying how high the birds can go. The, uh, the cranes and the um not just the cranes the uh, turkey vultures that fly really high up in the sky when the sun gets low in the sky like before sunset i saw one one time that had to be at least i don't know at least a mile high looking up that high up in the sky just wishing i could be up there with them i could tell it was a crane because uh the wingspan but they were way up there. I can judge height in a heartbeat with all my studies and all. I'd say they were at least, at least a mile high. Like in Colorado. <laughs> mile high stadium. But see, you're out here. You can hear the planes because there's no buffer of the trees. When they get above us, you can hear the planes easily. Either head of the PDK or something. But you probably want to know why I never upload music to my videos. There's three reasons. I love music. I want mo- not movies. They're all my movies. But I want music on my videos. But I do it for three different reasons. I designed it like that. You want to know why? Number one is the guidelines. I love music. But it takes- I have a very special kind of music I love. I love all music. But I love instrumentals. Not necessarily, not necessarily the words. I don't listen to the words that much. But I love all types of music. I don't care what it is. But it's the sound that, that touches me. It's the sound that touches the soul. You should already know that by now. But I'll tell you the reasons why. Number one is the YouTube guidelines. I know they say they have 15,000 songs, 1,500 songs, whatever it is. But it took me hours upon hours to scroll through every song to try to find a perfect one. Keyword perfection, perfect. But nothing touched my soul. Nothing speaks to my videos or speaks to you about my videos and who I am. That's why we make videos, right? We make videos that speak about us, that speak to others about who we are, about who they can be or who they may be. The genres, everything. But that's the main reason I don't, I can't. Because the guidelines, I don't want any strikes against me. But you wanna know the main reason I don't do it? That's why I designed the videos. A silence, besides me talking. Think about it. I give you the option to listen to your own kind of music, your favorite kind of music, to go along with the movie, with the videos. So you just go on YouTube, iTunes, whatever it is, and you play your own kind of music that you love while watching my movies. 
that kind of respect so I don't shove my own interest upon you. Oh, there goes one right there. Beautiful, isn't it? Good old crane taking off. But that's another reason why I do it. Out of respect for the YouTube viewers or anybody who watches the movies, I, I record. So you have that option to listen to the kind of music that you love while watching them. But I'm not going to tell you what kind of music to listen to. That's up to you. That's why it's used to touch the heart. Don't always pay attention to the words. You have to pay attention to the sound. The sound that you enjoy. No one knows this. I'm going to bring another thing that lights you. You're going to see some beautiful things today. But, uh, but I'm going to tell you another kind. Think about your love of music. Music is a way to decode your own soul. To understand yourself as a human being. But it has nothing to do with the words. It's all about the sound. You want to know how to decode yourself as a human being to know who you really are? Like I said, you can pick any song you want to listen while watching one of these videos like this. Maybe some Dachshon ambient water for horses. Just pick that song. Yeah. Just upload it. Just get on YouTube, type in Dachshon Ambient, Water for Horses, and listen to that song while you're watching this video. How about some Dachshon Ambient with uh, Nocturnal in three parts? That one. The cover image is like a beautiful sunset orange image, like the sun going low on the horizon somewhere in India. Or something. I try to pinpoint locations by just studying the images. You don't believe me? Here we go. Try this. This is how you decode your soul. Decode yourself by using music. Not using the Metron cube. We'll try that later. Or the flower of life, but it's in a way. Kind of like the same concept how you're supposed to study everything in the universe what those two components stand for. Just go through iTunes and you listen to music. Either it's your own collection or the better thing to do is do things that aren't part of your collection. Look for songs that aren't part of your collection. And here's what you're supposed to do. Listen to the songs. Pick out the ones that sound better to you, the ones that touch your soul with the sound. If, I don't care what it is. This is where we're getting down to. This is how to decode your soul, decode yourself by using music. You pick the songs that sound really good to you, the ones that touch your soul. It could be anything. Either it's the base of the rap songs, but don't listen to the words. You listen to the sound. It's all about the sound, the music itself, the instruments. And you pick the ones that you like most. It's all about the sound. Like the way water sounds on a waterfall. How that's soothing to everybody. I don't care if you rob 10 people and if you're in prison for 50 years for robbery or something. There's something about music that everybody loves. But it's, you're using the words to manipulate me. You have to step back and use those sounds of it. And you'll be acting all crazy when you find out what you really love. There's park police up there. They're coming to get me. <laughs> Exposing all these secrets that no one's ever known before. These concepts that the human race doesn't ever think about. Go through the songs. Hit every last one of them. And think about it. Oh yeah, this one sounds good. I love this one. You'll feel a tingle in your spine. You'll feel something very strange happening. Yeah, school's still in session.
They're doing construction out here. There used to be trees up there. I like the, the one that had trees. So you can feel kind of private out here. Georgia Outdoors right there. Yeah, you're probably listening to iTunes, trying to figure out what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> this is going to make you run out the door. It's going to take a little bit of time, though. It's going to take weeks, actually. It's going to take probably about 150 songs to decode who you are, who you really are as a human being, what your soul is made of. All right. Get the songs together. Don't ever look at the titles. That's the thing I left out by accident. Don't look at the titles. Pay attention to the sounds, the instruments. How everything goes together. Then, after you make those collections of songs, Or shall I say the sounds, that is. And you're probably asking, what do you do next? Yeah, buddy. What do we do next? After you made the collection, now you read the titles. It's going to blow your mind. That tells you who you are. That tells you that the Koji, that tells you exactly who you are as a human being. That's why I don't care what nationality you are, what race you are. That's the beauty of music. It's a decoding device. It's not a universal language. It's not. There's two things that are universal languages, and I'll get to that later. So you're probably looking at the titles of your songs, but you can't look at the ones you already like. You got to start from scratch to decode yourself. You have to pay attention to the songs, the sounds of the songs. I know you trendy people these days. You go by what's trending. This band, that band, this artist. You go by what other people like because you want to be like other people. That doesn't decode your soul. That's not who you are. You're trying to be like everybody else. Don't be like everybody else. Be yourself. There's nothing wrong with trying to be, you know, like the same kind of music, what's on the radio, what other people like. Yeah, that's okay. But there's a deeper part of you. You should have that secret collection that exemplifies your soul. That's me. I got songs people like today. I do. Because it speaks about our times. But mine span from way back in the day, 30s, 40s, all the way up until today. That's my personal collection. But this collection I have that speaks about who I am is a different kind of collection. So you go look at the titles now. The titles of the songs. It'll blow your mind. That is who you are. Congratulations. You have learned who you truly are through the art of music, the sound of music, the sound of music. But yeah, you could be Beyonce, you could be Jay-Z, you could be Bruce Hornsby, you could be Beethoven. You could be anybody, bank robber. You could be a murderer. You could be Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> uh, or you could be uh, Genghis Khan. You could be anybody. You just have to decode yourself through music. And you'll be amazed who you discover who you are. You could be both good and bad. You could be just bad, you could be good. But you have to analyze the titles. 
but I'll tell you a different trick on how to make this world a better place, especially in the United States. This goes out to all the uh, convenience store owners and stuff, grocery stores, whatever it may be. If there's a robbery going on, somebody staying in line, bank robbery, whatever it may be, this could be part of your protocol. And this is gonna make you cry, because it's real. I'm a man of science, but I've all, always tried to decode ways to make things better so people see the light. There's a bank robber going on or something. There's always going to be that button that you hit to call the cops, notify the cops. You might have a, a money bomb or something, the ink bomb, or anything to try to get these guys caught. But you have to play with their souls. You got to play with their minds a little bit. They have a goal of robbing the bank and hurting people. Some of them don't. Here's what you do. There's got to be another button you hit, a special kind of button that you hit on the side. It plays a song, a very special song. What happens when you sing Amazing Grace in church? I started this idea back when I was a kid. There's something about that song that makes people cry, just like Ave Maria, when people play it at the funerals and all. Ave Maria. But it's got to be one of the very specific songs that touches everybody's soul. As a child, all the way through being a senior citizen. You hit that button. And it plays one of those songs. Probably not Ave Maria. Oh, would choose Amazing Grace. And it plays that all over your speaker system while you're getting robbed. Just wait to see what happens. Something very significant will happen. Where do you want to go? You want to go that way? Or do you want to go this way? It's up to you. I've been all over this place. But we're still in suburbia. Million dollar houses up there. Up there by Hunt Cliff. This place what we're entering is uh, like a reservoir. Even though we're still technically in the Chattahoochee because the reservoir was created by Morgan Falls Dam back in the 1900s. So this place was flooded. It's cool coming out of here because of the little islands and all. I come out here sometimes and just explore and pick up the garbage. <laughs> Waters aren't that deep. That's why I'm a little concerned about this area through here because I don't want to get stuck. High school kids come here all the time and they're walking through it like I used to. It's real nice out here though. I'd advise you to come out here. Everybody, if I had a billion dollars, I'd buy everybody in the United States a kayak. Even ones that you can put uh, wheelchairs on. That'll be nice. Look at how this water is. Real nice. There's a snake over there. Look at him in the water. Look at him, big snake right there in front of us. There he goes. Making that trail. There he goes right across the water. See him? Probably a water moccasin or something. I'm probably about maybe 30 feet away. A Steven Strasberg fastball can take him out. I wouldn't kill anything though. I wouldn't. They deserve to live. He's probably trying to get to his house, his home. But no one's uh, done exploration videos through here before, I don't think. They probably did for uh, some kind of magazine or something. 
these little short skits that you would see from the north, from the park services. But I feel like that show, Georgia Outdoors, I feel like all the videos on YouTube exploring with their kayaks. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just taking you for a grand tour of Morgan Falls Reservoir. Also the Chattahoochee River. I'll take you down to the um, to the dam. It's pretty full today. We had some rains last night around here. That's good. But the waters are still kind of clear. That's good. But this is Gold Branch Park up through here. A very large park. Yeah, you got it right. I've explored throughout there. Entire park. Things have moved around a little bit out here. It used to be a big old stump over there. It got moved a little bit. It used to be my favorite spot to just sit and just hang on to it as I had a couple of drinks. <laughs> uh, yeah, but there's a lot of history out here. I know there is. There's a lot of history under the waters. You just can't see it, unfortunately. The only history you'll see more of is the, uh, the stumps that were cut back in the early 1900s. Water protects a lot of stuff. When things run the water, it can protect the history of some certain things. But I've never... Yeah, we're going over under a canopy of trees. But one of the things you'll always see in the waters is these little divots. Those are the deer footsteps. They're all over the place. It's what you see most of out here in the water. I know it's not an object or anything like that. But it's the uh, footsteps from the deer coming out here all the time. You can hear people talking up there. Not too far from the trail. There's a trail right there. You're actually looking right at it. Oops. <laughs> One of the first times I came out here many years ago, going through Gold Branch, exploring through the woods. I didn't have a kayak back then. A long time ago. I'm not talking about 20 years or anything like that. I'm talking about maybe five or six seven years ago or something like that and uh i saw somebody on their kayak two days later i got one how's it going buddies you got babies look at him you ought to be scared of me <laughs> wow <laughs> she has like there's like, what, 15 of them out here? There they go. I know I'm not going to shoot your normal YouTube videos. We live in a different world. People like hate. They love hate. They love disrespect. They love making fun of people. I'm trying to turn the tables. But the internet is just overloaded with videos of hate. The most watched videos on YouTube are all about hate, making fun of people, fighting, doing bad things. I'm not your perfect human being. Oh, heck no. I'm far from it. Nobody's perfect. But we need to step up and turn the tables before it's too late, if you know what I mean. We don't have too much longer. We will be taken out. If it gets too bad, in a different way. I'll explain it later in a different video. You'll definitely want to pay attention. But you must turn the tables. 
quit uploading videos about how to trap women. Not trap them, but uh, how to um, expose the gold diggers. Just live. Don't upload videos about making fun of people. Don't upload videos about fighting. That's what the world wants to see. It's a big problem if you think about it. Some videos like mine will probably be the least viewed. They could be online for hundreds of days, hundreds of years actually. Because of the human race, they want to see hate. They want to see ways to do things bad. They don't want to see the beauty in things. I just hope this reaches all 6.6 .6 billion people of the world, whoever have access to uh, technology or just viewing things like this. I know it's not in every language. Hopefully there'll be a translator. But I'm just giving you advice, my findings, my beliefs. But everybody has different opinions and different beliefs. They do. You always will. That's not a problem. The problem is the direction that you're headed. The things that you, the bad things that you like. And I'm gonna tell you something very serious. No, I'm not your doomsday type of guy. No, I'm trying to turn the tables. Not in the world, I'm trying to turn the tables. Beautiful. Just trying to turn the tables. See what I'm talking about? The divots. The animals coming out here. The deer. You probably don't see them. The sun's in the wrong spot. That's my stomach growling. I don't eat that much. Sometimes I don't eat at all. But I'm just here to give you a chance to turn the tables, to make the world right. I know there's always gonna be war. I know there's always gonna be hate. That's part of us. Uh -oh. I'm starting to stop. <laughs> because I'm entering a very, very shallow area. I'm gonna have to get out and walk. One thing about cuss words. We make up these cuss words, don't we? We do. I try not to cuss because in a way it's disrespectful. But the human race created these things. But how did we create them? With our eyes, our knowledge, our minds, what we see. But they had, they had different meanings in the past. Like, you know, the B word. It's a female dog. But we use it in a very specific way these days to explain something else disrespectful. That's why I'm talking about the hate. You do things now on the purpose of hate. But I'm not here to end the world or nothing like that. There's a few of us who want to turn the tables, help make it right. You might not think so, but just look what's in front of you. I always had money to travel, go all over the world and do stuff like this. But I want to work in a different way, a very specific way. I have a lot of interest that I want to bring about. But some of us don't have too much time left. We're here for a purpose. But the human race needs about 50 to 75 years to turn everything around. Change your attitude, change your mind about things. Second guess your uh, ideas of hate. And gain a new kind of knowledge. Just like your eyes. Evolution. The way you live today, your ideas of hate, fighting, all that kind of stuff. It's like evolution. It gets dropped down and passed on to other people in your life. TV shows, all that kind of stuff exemplifies all that.
Or we need about 52, 75 years to turn back. I mean, we can still evolve with technology. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about the human spirit. Everything. On how we keep going forward with our beliefs, our ideas. But nothing's perfect. Isn't that cute bird up there? Besides the uh, banging of the hammers up there, I think I need to put on some suntanos. I usually give myself about an hour to get that perfect tan. I don't want to get burned too much. I'm trying to get that perfect tan. <laughs> I'm always worried about my complexion. Always. Perfect. Awesome. The calm waters of the Morgan Falls Reservoir. But yeah, just step away from the computer. Do yourself a favor. You're probably not going to listen to this video. You probably don't care. That's the problem. The human race does not care. You don't. I know you don't. Trust me. But all you have to do is just care a little bit. Just a little bit. Don't ever tell somebody you don't care. It's another thing, concept for everybody. Especially when it comes to animals, nature, or the human race. Never say you don't care. Because you do care deep down inside. Just say, because of your certain circumstances in life, you are unable to be concerned with the matter. That's what you should always say. Because deep down inside, you do care. I know you do. Don't ever say you don't care. Because you do care. trails at Gold Brands Park. It's a big park. I've been through the entire woods. We're talking about, I think I did 11 or 12 miles that day. I know what you're thinking. You're crazy. Through the woods. Yeah. Gold Branch. I wonder why they call it Gold Branch. I bet it has something to do with the, um, the trees or something out here. Sorry about the contrast. I bet it has nothing to do with finding gold up here. I hope that it does. I'm just letting you see the beauty of it. But I have an idea about where gold can accumulate in bodies of water over hundreds of years, maybe 60 years or something, I don't know. Depends on the thrust of the water, the flow of the water, the currents, the currents of time. I want to try something. Well, not me, I'm not a scuba diver. But I want the National Park Service or the, the uh, electrical company, Swords of Power, I want them to send a scuba diver to the very base of Morgan Falls Dam. Uh, what's the other ones? Any kind of dam that's along the Chattahoochee. I want to test the theory. What if, what if, when Morgan Falls Dam is about 100 years old, Chattahoochee's only 1949, 1951, you're talking about like 60 something years. What's the other ones down in South Georgia? Bartless Ferry Dam, that one. I forgot how old that one is. But the ones that go all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. But I want them to send scuba divers on the north side, not the north side, but where the water comes into, where the currents end, where it's dammed up. I want them to go on the base, to the base, the bottom, very bottom, 
and see if they can find some gold. Because I have a theory. Over many, many years, the currents of the river, we're not in a very high current area, that's for sure. But I'm talking about the deeper parts where the river actually exists. In all those areas where it comes right into the front of the dams, where it all backs up, where everything backs up like this. Not like this, but I'm talking about my fingers, like how it just flows and it just goes against the dam. I have a hunch that there's going to be, possibly, I'm not sure, it's just a theory of mine, that there might be a lot of gold that's trapped at the base of every one of those dams. Because I, it has no place to go. That's the end point, and it's a very heavy material, very heavy metal. It can get pushed along with the currents, the currents of time. But what if, what if, there's a crap load of gold at the bottom of each of those dams and no one has ever looked, ever, for a hundred years, for instance, out here. But it might take 50, 200 years for it to accumulate just a, a good amount of it. It could be millions, it could be hundreds of thousands, it could be billions, who knows? They could be giant nuggets, they could be just like the flakes you see in Goldschlager. <laughs> That's another theory I had about where gold might accumulate. Oh, look how the light's illuminating that little part right there. Yeah, how the cloud's passing over. Perfect. Of course, I don't have my DSLR out here. Welcome to Morgan Falls Dam up through here. It's right there. Excuse me. Let's go. Not get too close, guys. We're not. I respect the law and the safety of others. Safety of myself. The reason I said others is because the others who are always with us. That's how life is. It's our life. Our soul, everything. People have died there before they have. It's 100 years old. I forgot about the stories behind it. I read into everything. I try to gain that knowledge of the things around me. Things that make up history of everything. Especially significant places. Like the rocks I'm going to take you back up to in about another 30 minutes. We've gone a long way. It's about three miles down here. It's three miles back. Sun's going behind a big old cloud. A flying machine. Perfect. Thank you. Sun's coming back out. I gotta save somebody. I do this all the time. I know, don't think I'm weird. Yeah. Don't fall back in, buddy. One time I had a cup full of, uh, cup full of, uh, had a yellow jacket one time. They go to sleep when it gets dark. It was almost dark outside. What is that? Dirt dauber. Okay, no big deal. That's how you have to respect life. He can crawl on me. He ain't gonna sting me. Yeah, I've saved, uh, look at that. I've saved, uh, insects all the time out here. Look at him. See? He's drying off. Probably one of those flying ants, I think. Carpenter ants. The queen. I saved the queen. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look, 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 look. Check it out. Look. There we go. The sun has got that one spot illuminated as it moves along, as it exposes itself. I always have your camera rolling. Look at that. Watch it happen. Watch it in real time. Do a time lapse. Makes it more perfect. Let me scroll out because it's really coming up. Here we go. Watch it as it happens.
look at how this horizon right there up on that hill right over there hell is still uh dark that's crazy that's awesome i bet the people who live in that house right there have a perfect time experiencing all this they got money that's hunt cliff houses from the six to 1.5 million that's okay money is not everything experience is everything life is everything Oh, there he is. Still drying off. I gotta go set him off over there in the woods somewhere. Yeah, I know you think I'm weird. That's okay. I'm different. Just taking pictures. The way the sun cascades down through the woods. It's perfect. My eyes see things differently. <laughs> I got a question for you. Does Suntan Lotion expire? I don't know. I tried to experiment one time with some old Suntan Lotion that I found in an antique store. Yeah, all that knowledge being built inside of me trying to discover new things. They went to the antique store one time and they had a uh, have to use a bottle of uh, suntan lotion. I guess antiques should be anything, especially when it comes to modern things like uh, cosmopolitan type stuff. Suntan lotion, makeup, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so anything that's like modern conveniences like suntan lotion, I guess 1980s should be, or 70s should be considered antique when it comes to the certain things I've gone quite a bit half a mile maybe let's give my right hand a break no pun intended <laughs> yeah well, the reason I was asking about suntan loaves and being expiring is because uh, perfect I was putting on the uh, suntan lotion like an hour ago, an hour and a half ago. And I still feel that I have like a little bit of burn coming through. Uh oh. A rainstorm's gonna be developing in the next seven or eight hours to the northeast of us. Somebody's coming. You're about to see something very nice up here. One of my favorite places. But it's not just mine. It's other people's. Especially when the kids get out of school. who live in these rich neighborhoods. But more power to them. To their parents. <laughs> Money's not everything. I like moving around from place to place. I can't stay more than two or three years in one place. If it's the same city, I'll be in like two or three different apartments within a five year span. Because I like moving to different places. Money has nothing to do with it. Yeah, money is a status symbol. You can have all the money in the world. I could have all the money in the world, but I just want to be in different places. I can't see myself in one building, one house for 30 years. I can't. Never been like that. Longest I've ever lived in a place was three years. I loved the place. I did. Incredible place. 
but I had to move because I wanted something different. Sorry, that scraping noise is me, my paddle going against the uh, sides of my kayak. But yeah, you're looking at it. We're almost there. We're about 280 feet away. I can judge distance. This outcropping here, it's been here for millions of years. I don't know if it's been in millions of years. It probably was a stream back just 5,000 years ago. I don't know. I've been trying to study that though. Perfect. I like seeing the uh, the people come over here to jump off the top of the rocks up there. I want to do that one day. Yeah. Garbage man at the Chattahoochee. Yeah, but the current around this rock location, these rocks, is pretty deep. I mean, pretty uh, swift. Create that obstacle, obstacle illusion within you. You don't know if you're going backwards or standing still or going forwards. Try to go forwards, but keep getting pulled backwards. Because once it hits those rocks, you have to paddle, paddle forward as hard as you can. Sorry if it was out of focus. But yeah, you're talking about maybe 35 feet right there. But the rocks go up about maybe 75 up there at the very tip top. It's an immaculate place to be, if you ask me. Perfect. I want to be in those rocks when they come falling down. Those boulders, the outcropping, the granite. There's a lot of cedar trees up there. They love places like this. I don't know if they love it. But they're always abundant, like just that one right there. Just chilling, trying to get that sun. Been there for about maybe seven or eight years, could have been ten. There's ranking, they just dropped in the beer can. Beer cans all out there. Come on, buddy, jump. Look at that cedar tree. It's perfect. Like the curves of the human form. Yeah, they're drinking. Don't worry, buddy. I'll be man enough. I'll pick up that can since you dropped it out. You'll never be able to get out of here though. I mean, you can get out probably right here if you had somebody to spot you. Spot the boat as you climb up. Nobody jumps. Why not? I want to see somebody jump. Catch on camera. Yeah, we're completely under this underhang right here perfection of nature. Millions of years of the Chattahoochee. Like I say, you probably don't care about this. That's okay if you don't. I do. That's why I'm making the videos, so you can look at it, even if you don't care about it. Absolutely incredible. I know it's probably not the best thing in the world. It is in this one little spot within a five mile radius it is. life. Yeah, he's got liquor. Drinking the beer and liquor at the same time. Recording history. Yep. Just wait.
I just want to jump in.